Hello, everyone. Good afternoon and a warm welcome to this webinar, marking the official start of the Twinning Weeks campaign. I'm confident that most of you are already familiar with the campaign's purpose, but for those who might not be, I encourage you to join the annual group and explore the dedicated sections for more information. Uh, my colleague Alessia uh, will post the link for you in a while in the chat. Uh, without any more delays, I'd like to introduce our guest speakers for today, Marco, Lydia and Marilina. Uh, Marco Neves uh, is a computer science teacher, consultant and expert in artificial intelligence and education. Lydia Crowley, an international analyst and expert in data and artificial intelligence. And Marilina Lonigro, experienced twinner and moderator of the annual group Innovation and Education, who will also moderate part of this webinar today. The focus for today is, as you probably have understood, artificial intelligence in education. And without further ado, I would like to leave the floor to our speakers now. So uh, we will be starting with Marco, if I'm not mistaken. So Marco, please, the floor is yours. Um, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, um, I want to thank for the invitation. It's a huge pleasure to be here once again and in, in collaboration with with that meeting um and I, I will start by sharing my screen with you give me just uh, one second okay um i have around uh, 15 um, minutes to talk about um, a very complex and, and challenged topic so um i will focus in um mainly uh, three points um, in terms of uh, generative AI in, in education. Um, I will um, try to address where it came from. So it's always very important for us to have an understanding when we are talking about technology and, and in this case, in such a challenge technology as uh, AI, just to give you a brief um, contest about uh, AI and where we are right now with generative artificial intelligence. I want also to show a little bit about what can it do and most important of all, once we are all teachers and educators, what are the impacts for learning, giving them the actual context in terms of um, artificial intelligence. So I will start um, by make a reference launching point and is always very critical and important for us to have uh, an understanding in terms of how we get here, what happened before, so that give us a clear understanding in terms of what are the challenges that we are facing nowadays. And in my perspective, um, we have four key moments in terms of this movement that we humans are doing um, from the analog states to the digital states. Um, I'll, I'll try with, uh, with the first one is when we started uh, this um, transition around uh, 40 and 90 decades of the previous uh, center. Um, and, and mainly what we are using as a device, it was the computer. Then we, we, we moved to a second stage, in my opinion. We are talking about the web and cloud storage. So what's starting to happen, it was a lot of information, a lot of data, and we have difficulty to access the, that data or to search that particular data. And one of the key uh, technologies at this time, it was the search engines such as Google. Then we move from another step. Um, I call it the, the, the third phase is, is what we are living uh, right now. So we have such amounts of, of data, such amounts of, of information that even the search engines as Google, they are not enough for us to take um, in terms of inputs and patterns from this particular data. So we are right now in the age of the language models uh, as agents of, of cognition. And we are building a, a lot of different uh, tools and platforms to manipulate this uh, huge amount of data. And one of the key uh, elements in this is ChatGPT. I think all of you have uh, heard about it. But this will not stop. We will move for uh, a next a next step in terms of the evolution of this system. So one thing that we clearly understand right now nowadays is the um, fast pace of transformation. How things are happening. 
even for us as humans, we don't have a, a mental model that is able to support and able uh, to digest all the things that are uh, happening uh, right now. But in terms of the, of the change that is happening, we uh, will go in, in the path where we're going to have, in terms of these agents of cognition, where they're going to be uh, able to interact with other agents or other platforms or other tools, and they even will uh, be able to do this in an autonomous uh, way. So if you are being very challenged right now, let's say the last decade, um, the next decade will be even more challenged. So it's, it's, it's important for us not only to focus on the present, we need to understand of the past, but we also have to look at the future to what is, is, is uh, expecting us. Another key characteristic of these platforms nowadays is their strangeness or weirdness. So in terms of this evolution that I share with you of these different phases, we went from um, interface where we were interact uh, with the systems through what we call machine language. And then we evolved to a, 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 a level where we were mainly in terms of graphic interfaces. So mainly we click and we have a, a, an action. But nowadays, uh, these systems, they came again to this particular type of interfaces. So mainly what we have is a prompt. We need to understand that there is big difference between technologies that we have before and this kind of technology. So they are not deterministic, so they can have different behaviors. They don't come with, with, with a tutorial or, or a manual. Um, we don't know even what are all the potential of, of these uh, uh, tools. And we are even in, in a position where we need the interactic, uh, interaction linguistic or a conversation style to take the best of these tools. So we are clear in the point of inflection between what we are used to do in terms of interactions with digital technologies and what we have today. But this is just the beginning of the journey. Uh, but even being the beginning of the journey, we also need to try to figure out where all of this have, have started. Um, there is a, a key point in terms of uh, artificial intelligence um, as, let's say, one of the starting points. Uh, and, and, and this moment is when Alan Turing he, uh, published a, a paper um, with the title, If the Machines Can Think. And on, on, on this paper is, is a beautiful paper, it's not only a technical paper. There is a lot of questions and interrogations uh, related with the field of computer science and the advent of artificial intelligence. And one of the questions that Alan Turing um, asked on this paper is, if can machines think? And it's from there, and I will just share with you a, a, a brief timeline so for us to have an understanding, a historical understanding. It's something that should be part of an AI literacy is from where we start with the Turing test, uh, the Turing paper, until where we are right now. And there is a, another moment, and I, I just highlight the Elisa moment because it's, it's a very important moment in, in terms of the chatbot developments. And of course, in, in 2022, we have this moment in November when we have ChatGPT. No one was expecting that. No one was expecting to have a technology that was able to have a conversation uh, with a human. Even in some times, if you forget that you are talking with a machine, um, we have an idea that you are talking um, in terms of, of human to human uh, conversation. And that is very critical. And that, that has a lot of huge impacts in terms of, of, of education, because language, written and oral language, is, is, is a key factor in terms of uh, human uh, intelligence. So mainly we can address that we have like this new BC and AC, where we have before Sharp GPT in the ecosystem of AI, and then we have after Sharp GPT. But we cannot also forget what will come next. And if we take a, 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 a look, a precise look in terms of what are the different developments in, in the terms of um, the AI ecosystem, 
what we will get after this right now, what we have is the worst version of these uh, models. They have a lot of, of critical things. Lydia will uh, address some of these key points. There is a lot of things that we should be uh, aware. We should be informed about the, some of, of the fallacies and some of, of the, the critical things related with that. But what we cannot clear forget is in terms of the evolution that we have in terms of the capabilities of these systems. OK, this it was like uh, more in general about uh, artificial intelligence. But what everybody is talking uh, nowadays since November uh, 2022 uh, is about generative artificial intelligence. And this is, is, is very interesting also to make a reflection over here. So until this, this, this moment, not so many people were talking about artificial intelligence. Not so many people were uh, worried uh, or, or were uh, um, amazed about the potential of, of artificial um, intelligence. From that moment, we start to have a lot of people talking about, uh, we know what are the worries in the educational field, that everybody is trying to understand what is a clear uh, generative artificial intelligence. But it's also very interesting for a more open perspective or broad perspective on this particular is before ChatGPT, we already have amazing AI systems, even more capable in, in particular uh, tasks that were able to do amazing things. I'm, I'm, I'm just remembering about AlphaGo or AlphaFold and no, no one was really worried about this. But once we have a technology that is able to do um, a, a lot of tasks that are in the average of the human being, then we're starting to be hurried. And, and this is a moment in terms of a critical moment. But what is uh, generative artificial intelligence? Just in, 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 in a brief uh, definition, we are mainly talking about AI algorithms that can generate new data based on uh, data that already exists. And we're talking about text, image, video, music, and so on. Nowadays, we have these AI systems that are able to produce a lot of different types of uh, resources. But for that, we need what we call a prompt. So this is the linguistic interaction, the conversation that we need to have with the model. But all of this fits in the field of artificial intelligence. So this is nothing completely new. This has uh, have a background in terms of, of, of development. And in this particular, in the field of uh, artificial intelligence, as you can see here um, on this slide, we have like machine learning, we have deep learning, and inside of deep learning, we have what we call the uh, language um, large models. And on this particular, we have the generative AI, where we mainly have these two types of models. We have the language models and we have the diffusion models. The language models, they address in terms of platforms like ChatGPT using models like GPT 3.5 or GPT 4 or other um, models from uh, Google and also from Meta. And in diffusion models, they are mainly used to generate image. And in this particular, we have daily two. Uh, right now, we already have uh, daily three. We have stable diffusion and we have mid -journey. So this gives you uh, 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 um, a, um, a brief uh, uh, contextualization in terms of what is the, the, this, all these piece puzzles that fit in uh, the ecosystem of artificial intelligence. But the question is, what can uh, generative AI make or create or generate? I will just give you uh, uh, very briefly uh, some of these examples. So we can interact with the system. For example, I can ask him to be like a tutor to me to explain me a particular topic. He can adapt in terms of what are my knowledge or my, my base knowledge. Is always very um, pleasant in terms of the way that interact with me. I can even ask him if I want to learn something and then I want to apply a particular pedagogical approach, such as gamification, for example, he's able to do it. I can, for example, ask him to explain to me a particular topic, for example, uh, prime numbers in, in maths and adapt this in terms of, of a poem. So there is almost no limit in the terms 
I can interact with this system. But it's very important for us to understand that this is not a search engine. This is not only a system uh, where I can go and ask for things. Is a language model with all the potential in terms of text interactions that I can do with this model. So this is in the language models uh, side. Then we have what we call the diffusion models, like for example, Midjourney that is able and uh, allow me uh, to create image. Or if I want to be more creative, for example, um, where I'm showing to you, I ask the system to create an image of Lisbon that represents Lisbon, but all the elements they were like Lego bricks. Or nowadays we are having other systems or um, other uh, possibilities that can, for example, apply this kind of, of effects. But just now uh, we have, um, we know that uh, ChatGPT, for example, will be able to interact and create image uh, directly inside of, 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 of the system. And at the same time, it will be able in terms of voice interaction and also in terms of uh, speech interaction. And that is not only inside of these uh, tools um, and platforms like ChatGPT, we already have other platforms that will integrate generative AI. And this is a huge challenge in terms of, of, of education because platforms like we use, like um, Office uh, 365, uh, Drive with Google Docs and all these kind of platforms, they will have um, possibilities to generate not in the, only uh, text, but image presentations and, and so on. And when we ask something to our students for, for them to produce, we are expecting that they take a particular path in terms of their learning process. So when we ask them to do something like a presentation, we expect them to search for uh, information, to be critical regarding the information, to develop digital competencies. But right now, when we have and we look around and all of this is being uh, automated, of course, we need to make a reflection. We need clear to look at uh, the educational systems and try to have a clear understanding about what is happening right now. And sometimes we are leaving the moment and the moment could be so transformative and could be so disruptive, but because we are leaving the moment, we don't have a clear understanding about what is happening. And this was just published uh, two days ago in terms of the possibilities of ChatGPT and when they are embedded in ChatGPT is on, not only a text interaction, but also in terms of be able to see, to hear or to speak. In this particular, I want just to uh, show you this short video about uh, a kid that is making uh, very critical questions related with ChatGPT. I will just play it for you to listen. Uh, Marco, just one information. If you want to include the sound, you need to do it before you share the presentation. Ah, okay. Uh, but you need it, to it, include the computer sound, but if it's fine like that, because this has, this has subtitles, so I think okay. you, you, you okay, can understand. Perfect. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Thank you, thank you. So mainly, what we are seeing here is the kid is asking. Okay, so I have this chat GPT or any other platform. So the the, the critical question is, can I use it? Am I cheating? Should that be used it or not? And, and in this particular, we have to look, uh, I will go just uh, right for my last uh, point in terms of, of, of my presentation, is related with the teaching and learning process. So we can um, I, I just uh, build this, this, this short, uh, let's say, infographic for us to have an understanding in terms of the process of the teaching and, and learning process. And we can see here, mainly in terms of the teaching process, it between the information that the teacher have organized in terms of the curriculum, and then we have the, all the other perspective in terms of learning that the student is able to do. So this is not just in one way. Of course, then we have tasks like application and practice and, and, and so on. But if we take a look in terms of right now, the age of artificial intelligence, most of all this information, even if not corrected, is in Internet, is cloud or digital. And these models, they are cognitive agents that are able in terms of produce even 
creating not only new data, but even in terms of uh, produce uh, a knowledge. So the question is, with that knowledge and the representation that we do in terms of intelligence, we are starting asking if this is only a human exclusivity in terms of the way that we are being challenged. But we also giving the, the, the actual educational uh, systems and structures that we have, we could be uh, falling in terms of what I call learning failures. So if we take a look in terms of the learning process that the student should be able, the student or anyone that is in, on the learning process, what we're going to see that we need a brainstorming in terms of framing the question. We need to gathering relevant points given the topic. We need to decide understanding of that considerations. We need to draw a development plan for this work to be carried out and we need to collect evidence. And then we need to, with, with feedback, to make a uh, reexamine all this kind of information. If we look clearly and precisely to these language models, we can see that brainstorming there, they are able, able to do it. Gathering relevant points, they can do it. Draw a development plan, they can do it. Collect evidence, they can do it. And even the, 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 the content that is produced to interact feedback, they can do it. Mainly, right now, what they are not able to do is this particular aspect in terms of understanding. So when we are challenged our students to do something, we need to understand if these models, they are able to do it directly with no intervention in terms of the students. Otherwise, we are in, in, in a danger of falling in terms of these learning uh, failures. So is mainly, I just want, want to finish uh, right away, is in the way that we address in terms of the actual educational systems, in the, in the way that we need to rethink all this uh, particular. And just one suggestion, just, just to finish, we need to start looking in terms of developing collaborative hybrid learning environments, where we know that learning is mainly an in, a social interaction, but these models and these agents and these platforms will be uh, put in place and used to uh, augment uh, the learning process of our students. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marco. I understand that it's quite difficult to uh, wrap up all these concepts in such a short time, but I think you have done it so clearly and thank you for setting the, the basis for a more in-depth discussion on the topic, which will continue with, with Lydia in a while. So please, Lydia, the floor is now yours. And uh, of course, you, for the participants, if you have questions, comments, concerns, doubts, post them in the chat and we will keep an eye and, and respond there. Uh, thank you. And I'm hoping that we are not leaving math to the machines, me being a mathematics teacher, <laughs> losing the job because of the machines. But let's see what the impact uh, will be. So some of the promises presented to us from the AI is making education better for all universal access. For those two, I'm really hoping that it will become reality in our uh, lifetime. But also the, the promise is outsourcing knowledge from teacher to AI. Of course, make our teaching job more exciting. Thank you, it's exciting enough. Uh, also, they talk about outsourcing administrative tasks and that dashboard give all the information to the teacher uh, during the activities. Let's see how that will happen. Uh, I presenting you here a uh, definition of the AI from the US Department of Education because this one is connected with education directly and in emphasize parts detecting patterns so ai is recognizing patterns and among the patterns using ability using mathematical models give you the answer which is the most likely to happen also it talks about automating decision based on that set of data it uh, has 
Regarding the reality, some of the things you see on the slide are already available. Uh, Marco mentioned some of them. You probably tried some of them, experimented. So differentiation, some uh, performance reports, monitoring the progress, and also different types of assessment, not just formative, but definitely a summative assessment as well, which could be quite risky. Challenges which we face nowadays is that we doesn't have deep analysis, we doesn't have evidence, we just have a small samples. We learn that this teacher is working that one with the, their students. Something very interesting, is it efficient? It is efficient in that school, maybe nowhere else. But also lots of things are happening in, in smaller uh, areas few schools maybe work together. Uh, you've seen some of the interfaces which Marco presented and they're not created for the children. And of course, the content and the use policies are not intended for the children. I believe that almost all AI tools nowadays have an age limit 18, which means all of our primary, secondary students are out of that terms of use. We are all aware uh, about the biases still doesn't have a solution and we are not sure what practices are embedded in different AI tools intent for education and teaching. Maybe something we are not happy with, not agree with it's in there. Ethical questions, the first come from the use of the data. Where all our data goes? Who is doing what with those data? But also it goes towards the data sets because AI is making predi predictions, is making conclusion based upon historical data, no new new data. So could we, uh, are we limiting learning or we are guiding learning? We are all aware about social impact of the learning when students in the classroom pull each other, motivate, support. Not sure if AI could do that, or maybe students will badly respond from, to the tool which keeps saying them, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, and say, okay, I'm no longer working, I'm not longer learning. Uh, predictions are extremely risky because if we, if, our, if my career is built upon the data set from my secondary school when I had two, grade two, from an English language, I wouldn't be here talking to you in that language. So what is self-fulfilling pro uh, prophecy happening? Uh, EU is working significantly in this area and education is put in the high risk level of the implementation of AI systems. So please be uh, aware of that and looking forward to support by that. Um, I was part of the expert work group who is in 2021-22 created the guidelines for the ethical use of AI and data in teaching and learning. I'm not presenting to you all the guidelines, but I believe <clears throat> Alessia or Marta will share the link with you uh, in the chat. Here is the first uh, overview of these guidelines, but I will just point on two things, on two areas in these guidelines. So one is about social and environmental well-being. So does the AI system clearly signal that its social interaction is simulated and that it has no capacities of feeling or empathy? We are aware that chat GPT politely communicating with us. We are tempted to say thank you. And as my fellow colleague says, you better say thank you because you don't know who will be in charge later on. So be polite with the machines, but also our students have to be aware that there is a machine on the other side, not a human. Also, accountability. Could you say to the parent or the students, I'm sorry, I don't know, AI give you that grade? Of course not. You have to take responsibility and be accountable for the grade, for the results, for the learning paths, whatever is provided to your students in your classroom. Another thing I was busy this year was European Digital Education Hub Squad for AI in Education, in which we work 
several months on this seven topic uh, of the AI use. Uh, a group comprised of uh, teachers on university level, primary, secondary, but also lawyers, writers, uh, ed tech providers. So very uh, different personalities and different expertise uh, in the group. And I'm very proud of those uh, results. I will just go briefly through it, leaving you to read it. But what is important is that every of these briefing reports has a recommendation part. So focusing on what would be good to be done. First of all, we talk about teacher competencies. Then we talk about how are we going to lead or support teachers to acquire those competencies. We are even giving some directions which of our documents you could read or to progress. And also, for example, this webinar is one of the examples how to support teachers in AI age. The third one give specific concrete examples of uh, some scenarios of the use of some tools you could be used and for all the level of education. The fourth one talk about um, education about the AI, the curriculum, how it could be embedded in different subjects, how it could be used as a separate subject, and of course some of the topics that are and the curriculums that are already available in a public space. Uh, influence on the governance, um, how it affects uh, governance of the data, education system, and similar. We also, one is dedicated to the AI ethics, giving also legal examples uh, how the court decided in some of the cases of data use, for example. The seventh one uh, have focusing topic on assessment, feedback and personalization. I would say this is quite interesting topics and with a plenty of risk, but plenty of benefits as well. So please look into it and find what is acceptable. Probably use in, could be used in your environment. The next document I'm uh, putting into your focus is brand new, published some 10 days or two weeks ago, Guidance for Generative AI in Education and Research. I had a pleasure to comment it on the day they are uh, announced uh, in Paris. So have in mind that lots of content created by the AI simply rubbish. They say AI is hallucinating, but this is typical IT wording when some uh, bugs are set up as a features. So this time some errors, some fakes are presented to us as hallucination. Could you hallucinate in your classroom? Is it allowed? But we are allowed to make errors and correct ourselves, of course. In this guidance by UNESCO, there are several examples described with different from different perspectives. So for research, supporting teachers, coaching, inquiring project based learning, working with the students with special needs. I put here just one of those examples, of course, the one which is interesting for us, chatbot as a teaching assistant. So in the future, maybe there will be generative twins of teachers assistants. I usually say I hope mine will be very pretty and maybe smarter. But you see here a possible risk as well. Need to guarantee human supervision and that this implication, this uh, development could also limit learners access to human guidance and support. But you can't block the progress. You can't block the books, the calculators, the internet. We learned that. I, I believe some of you are old enough to remember when internet at least was uh, entering the schools and we all worrying, oh, what the students will do? They will just find out everything on the, on the web. They will just simply copy and paste, but we still survive and we are still teaching them and we are still supporting them. So AI is here to stay. It's our responsibility to use it to create better education. 
but maybe we will have to think about from different perspectives. I was very surprised when I read that some USA schools are blocking translating tools. It was like, hmm, what? what? Well, we are living on translation. Well, especially if you are Croatian language uh, as, as a main language and you need translation to other languages. But yes, because translating tools could use the URL addresses of the website for a roundup of their filtering mechanism. So instead of fixing filter, they are forbidding translations. Yeah, having lots of students which are not coming from the USA. And Korea is starting to create textbooks using generative AI tools. One of the slides here presents how translation and fixing the errors from translation, so automated translations, human translation, translation and the time needed for uh, correct the errors is downsizing. So they predict that by 25, 26, um, the corrections will be minimal. But also, um, I, I give you a link to a video created by Translated, which shows how we human are communicating without saying any word, and we could understand each other. This is something that machines can't do yet. So, decision for us is where are we going to cut time? What options, what AI tools will help us? will unburden us? Or where are we going to waste our time? Are we spending three hours on prompting, refining, prompting, refining, and then having the result from the AI, that, which is not the thing we would like to have? Shouldn't we done that by ourselves much efficiently and in a shorter period? So have that also in mind. Uh, also decide who and what deserves your time and effort. Automated feedback is one of the things that's very popular. I even noticed some of the examples where teachers asking generative AI to write recommendation for their students for next level of education. But what worries me is that are we stealing our students from our effort, from our, because our students deserve our time, our personal feedback, our personal noticing what they are doing, what's their environment. So make it a balance and decide what deserves our time and effort or what we are outsourcing. Because if we outsource everything and not longer need it, we will have machine created the exams. We will have students answering those exams in a machine. We will have machine giving feedback on those results of the exam. So where is teacher in the loop? Think about it. So the, my question is for your thinking after this event. Um, with all this technology development, will we end up in the future where human teacher is available only to the rich? and the rest of us are stuck with the AI artificial teacher. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lydia. A lot of food for thought, I, I would say, and you, you left us with, with a question, and I would like to invite the participants to reflect on, on this question and eventually add some answers or comments uh, or thoughts in the chat. Uh, it was a really interesting presentation uh, and about how integrating artificial intelligence, but also uh, to know more um, whether the artificial intelligence is already used in, in the classrooms or whether it, it, it is to be discovered. Uh, also, which are the risks linked to it, but also the, the potential benefits. And as you mentioned, that, that there are guidelines. Uh, to start with and we invite you to check them uh, are part of the resources that we added in the group materials so in case you have uh, any doubts any um, concern maybe you could start uh, by reading this uh, this guideline 
to, to address the issue. OK, so uh, the webinar is not over because now we will have a more interactive part. And for that, I would like to invite on the virtual stage uh, Marilena, who will uh, moderate this uh, last session. Marilena, the floor is yours. We are uh, you're muted. We cannot hear you. Sorry, okay. <laughs> okay, hello. Well, I would like to thank Marco and uh, Lydia about their presentation and actually they answered almost uh, most of the questions that maybe teachers have and uh, myself I have as a teacher. And well, uh, I wanted to ask Lydia, she uh, was talking about uh, uh, the risks and ethical problems with uh, uh, using AI. Well, I've got two questions. You were talking about using AI to produce textbooks. And uh, do you think that this is uh, something uh, that uh, would not involve uh, biases or uh, ethical issues? And which uh, biases or ethical issues could AI have on in textbooks? Because textbooks are very important. I'm thinking particularly of topics, uh, well, maybe not so much about math, but when talking about history or literature or a philosophy, they could have a great impact. Um, well, my opinion is that generative AI could be very efficiently used to create textbooks, but the similar way as Korea is announcing I was reading the articles. I don't have first hand mm -hmm. experience. So creating a database from the existing textbooks. So you're not starting from a chat GPT. Oh, <laughs> you are starting with a huge set of already published, already approved textbooks. And from those resources are creating new ones. But I completely agree with you. Then there has to be some approval process for it. So human to check it out because there is there have to be a accountability. You can't say, sorry, computer created these textbooks and we are teaching by that textbooks that machine said to us. Complete nonsense. So using uh, focuses, focused databases with different resources like all the textbooks we have already published could be a good solution and maybe could make the prob um, the process of publishing uh, cheaper and faster, but absolutely have the human in the loop who will go through that and read it before we are giving it to our students. <laughs> OK, thank you. And another question I want to ask. Well, uh, I would ask this to both of you, uh, particularly Lydia was telling that, of course, AI cannot be used uh, in primary school. Uh, and this is clear why, but uh, I was thinking, uh, talking about uh, the importance of letting students understand that there is a machine behind what they get, would, be, would it be good to start uh, teaching uh, younger students, I mean primary school students, about AI and maybe show them some of the uh, biases that they could have and in which way could could we do that if Marco uh, I think Marco is more technical about this he could uh, answer that Marco um, okay <laughs> I, I was thinking what you were addressing the question to, to Lydia sorry yeah, well, Marilena. well I, I was addressing Marilena. the question to both of you but uh, yeah uh, yeah the, the question here is when we talk about AI in education we need to frame where we consider to apply or to use this particular kind of technologies. OK, if you are talking about primary school is one thing. If you are talking about high school is another thing. If you are talking about higher education is the same thing. OK, mm -hmm. so I don't consider that in terms, for example, primary school or even in terms of mid school where you don't have the students with the cognitive development already uh, structured well that we can be integrated this kind of, of, of tools. We can think for the, the teacher side, OK? If there is a yeah. possibility in terms of the teacher, let's say the more bureaucracy part component of that and can give them more time to, to, to be with the students. But it doesn't make any sense to put a, a young student six, seven, eight, nine or ten years. So it don't, doesn't have the cognitive development enough in, in terms of being used this kind of particular technologies. And this is something that then we start to, to, to 
listen to completely nonsense things in terms of the integration of artificial intelligence on this particular kind of, of contest. And we also, we cannot forget because we also focus too much in terms of chat GPT. And artificial generative intelligence is not only about the chat GPT. There is other possibilities in terms of development, different kinds of tools and platforms. Just take a look at Khan Academy, for example. They are developing, or they already have it, and they are testing, for example, in, in the USA, what they call Khan Amigo. And mainly they are using the data that they have from Khan Academy. And for that, uh, trying to build in terms of a student tutor and also a teacher tutor that can help them in terms of the teaching of the learning process. And the, the, the question here is not to give them directly in terms of the result or the answer to a particular task that is asked, is mainly giving support in terms of this learning process that we want to keep. So, or we invent another uh, educational system completely different from what we have right now, or the one that, that we have in terms of the capabilities of these systems and these platforms will jeopardize what I was saying is in terms of is the learning process of the students. And even we, we, we have to address, and I completely agree with Lydia in terms of the ethical questions, in terms of the yeah. privacy, in terms of the use, one thing is real. Students are using this. Just talk to, to students, even the younger ones. OK, so if schools refuse to educate and to uh, the, the students, the parents and, and also the teachers, we need to create some kind of awareness about what are the challenge that we are facing here and all the worries that we have related with this. So this is something that needs to be done right now. Because even the structure that we have so far, even in educational research, and we know how, 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 how much time it takes and all these kind of things, maybe we need also to make a, a reflection in terms of how we uh, also address these kind of things. Because I, um, uh, with my students, uh, they, they, they are in 10th grade, okay? And in, the, in one of the first days of classes, I asked them if they already have been using these kind of tools to do the task that we teachers ask them. And 95% of them were saying that they've been using this kind of tools. So this is something that we also need to reflect in terms of the challenge that we are facing right now. Yeah, and uh, yeah, okay, yeah. I, I, I think it is very important to start uh, teaching even young students about uh, the fact that there is a machine and that is a, uh, that doesn't come from a person, but from a machine. This is also very, very important. And related to this, and sorry to interrupt you, there was a question no. from the audience in the chat. Okay. Um, uh, they were asking, what about kindergarten? What do you think about teaching AI already in preschool and how? Uh, what I could add and build upon Marco's words is raising awareness. We are forgetting that we have um, safer internet activities. Mm -hmm. So teaching students as young as they are about critical thinking, assessing the results, so not taking everything as granted as a true. This could be teaching the kindergarten. You're not going to give the tool directly to the, to the kids, but you are working with them to yeah. recognize and to, to build that as, as a common sense in them. I usually said, we keep talking about, please don't trust everything that's on the internet. The same apply to generative AI. Please don't trust everything, have a blind faith. Have in mind, it could be used for harm. We are already aware that generative AI is used for grooming kids, but let's do for us. Don't repeat mistakes. Of course, we are not going to teach kids in the kin kindergarten probability theory, machine learning, but simply saying, <laughs> well, mm -hmm. it's part of the social and emotional development. It's not part of the technology, but yes, we should work with them because kids are using smartphones. So recognizing that on the other side is machine, it's this example worked with the smartphones already. So, yeah. yes, never too young to support their learning and the development of a common sense how to use 
uh, technology meaningfully, properly, and not for bad causes. Yeah. Uh, well, I have another question for uh, Marco. You were talking about cheating. Uh, cheating in text, in tech, in tests, of course, and um, teaching is also a lot about uh, testing. Uh, we need to test our students. We need to give marks. And well, my question is, um, what type of tasks should be uh, almost? Uh, yeah, uh, should we aim at in order to prevent cheating? Uh, because they're using generative AI. Yeah, that's that, that's a very what interesting. We, uh, uh, include in our tasks because I mean, if we ask, yeah, it, it, you were saying that uh, gen generative AI can do brainstorming, can think about, can improve what they said and so on. But what can what should we include in our tasks as teachers uh, to prevent cheating? Uh, the human plus. <laughs> Yeah, that that is a very a very interesting uh, question. Uh, first of all, if if you think about deeper in terms of education, there should not be the need to cheat. Okay, so the students <laughs> yeah. need to, to cheating. Okay, they were so involved in their learning process. Okay, we are fulfilled completely the individual in terms of what are their capabilities. So cheating should not take part in terms of the educational system. But the way that the educational systems are organized, sometimes this happen, and this is not. Uh, a technical thing or only educational thing is more a human thing because even mm -hmm. when you're talking about generative AI, they have bias and stereotypes and so on, they are just reflecting who we are. Okay, yeah. so the, that <laughs> is on, on the data, on the data that we produce. O of course, now we have the machines, they are producing a lot of data, synthetic data and so on, but most of that data was produced by, by humans. And when we think in, in, in particular about the structure of the actual um, educational systems that we have, we can take a, a, a similar metaphor in terms when, uh, and, and, and Lydia already mentioned this, we have other challenges in terms of education, okay? Um, we even have the, the calculators, we have the smartphones, we have the internet, we have Google, right? At that time, and at that time we need to adapt. So we can ask questions to the students that Google will not, not give them the answer because Google don't give answers, okay? But give the direct path in terms of this kind of information. And right now when we have these this, this technologies, and one critical thinking is about the one critical thing uh, is about the cross checking of the information. All right, we also on the internet have a lot of uh, and through information related with with a lot of of different topics. In this particular, one of the things that we have to be able to create is educational challenge, where you ask in terms of the, of the students something that this kind of platforms don't give you directly, okay? And on this particular, we don't need to uh, create a new wheel over here. We know that, for example, working on project-based learning is one of the, of, 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 of the approach that we can put in terms of our students or where even these technologies can help them to generate ideas, to do brainstorming, uh, to address in terms of the topic on, on, on different things. But if we ask them direct things, where they can go to these models and these models automatically give in terms of the answer. So we have a key question here. And the problem will not be chat GPT or the technology or the student. The problem will be me as a, as, as a teacher, what I'm asking to, 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 to the students. So this needs a lot of, 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 of uh, reflection uh, over here, but mainly is, okay, Try what you ask to the students. Use with this one of these platforms. Give the direct answer with need, with no need of intervention for you to adapt, to recreate, to regenerate, uh, and so on. Okay, so maybe this is not the correct activity in terms of of the students because you know the time of the students is completely different from our time when we were younger ones. Okay, yeah. they have so many bells ring around them that that challenge them to do a lot of things. And it was us that gave them this technology. So they didn't create or invent this technology. It was given mm -hmm. by us, the adults. Mm -hmm. Do you have any uh, viewpoint, Lydia, about this? Um, no, I, I really like the, the 
flow of the conversation because we are showing that problem of cheating is actually problem of assessment. Yeah. <laughs> the way we are assessing and this yeah. is the question we should answer. <laughs> Yeah, and I think it is also, as Marco was pointing out, is a problem of uh, uh, how we approach learning and uh, uh, teaching. So we should uh, really think about the way we uh, teach and we learn. And the fi my final question is, uh, well, Lydia was telling before uh, who is going to teach the next generations. Do you think that teachers will disappear and we will have just uh, chat GCP? Or what is the human plus that teachers should always uh, give to students? <laughs> well, uh, as I was reading all the tasks teacher would like or asking chat GPT to do um, instead of them, I start worrying because they really outsource almost everything to the AI yeah. tool. I don't see reason really for that, not no. because it's, it's smarter than us, but please don't forget we have the education moral and education background built into us during our training. We have our expertise, so use it for good. Not only for social and emotional development, because we are completely aware of that, that so far machines are not very good in that area, but also for a learning progress, for supporting students. So please don't outsource everything to the AI, then we will become obsolete. So <laughs> let's see. <laughs> we are deciding, actually we are deciding our teaching professor will remain or not. It's upon no. us. Yeah. Uh, OK, I think uh, time yeah, is I, over. I think, I think so, so ju ju just three seconds. Yeah, you just to, yeah, just sure. to complement what Lydia was saying. And there is another side that we cannot forget is the emotional side. OK, yeah. in terms of interaction is each student is a completely different student. OK, the machine cannot understand what is the past of the students, how he's feeling today, what happened uh, to them yesterday, what are the, the main goals? We cannot create a structure of a technology where we can put this, and we don't want that, that to happen. Okay, of yeah. course, the technology can help us in a lot of, 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 of different tasks and, and, and activities, but this side, the human side, is the one that we have to enhance more and more and more because without that, is not learning. Learning is a social interaction. So this is human to human. This is the history of, of humanity. Humanity. If you are degraded all these kind of things to machines, we're going to have a completely different thing that you will not be learning. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. Uh, probably Marta wants to add something or there is any question? I, I just them? want to thank you for, for being here today. I think it was a really interesting session. We had. Uh, towards the end a lot of comments and questions in the chat but I think you addressed most of them during the conversation and also Lydia tried to address them directly in the chat so thank you very much for for this it would be great to continue to talk and to answer more we questions but unfortunately we don't have the time today yeah, we, can, uh, we can set up a forum uh, in the group indeed that was so, I was going to suggest. We invited yeah. all of you to join the group, so please join the group because uh, there will be a follow up there, meaning we will continue the discussion on, on this topic there as well. So please, uh, Alessia, you can post once again the link and we invite you uh, all of you to join. OK, uh, I think we uh, need to close now and I would like to leave the floor to you for a final word. And meanwhile, I invite all the participants also to stay up to date with the upcoming events as part of the spring campaign, which you can find on the group as well. Thank you very much from my side and on the behalf of the eTwinning team. And please, Lydia, Marco and Marilena, I leave you to close this webinar. Okay. Well, thank you for the invitation. It was uh, very nice because of this interactive part when we compare our perspectives, our experience, uh, thank participants to being active. I see that we had a really good 
number of participants. So good luck with the age of AI and keep learning. That's the only answer. I, I just want to, to thank the invitation. It was a huge pleasure to be here uh, with you all and in particular uh, with Lydia uh, discussing um, this, this such critical and pertinent uh, thematic. And one of the things is um, what Lydia was saying, uh, keep learning, being updated, uh, know what has happened and, 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 and try as much as, as, as possible to address, given the, the, the students that we have, these particular questions, discuss with, with them. OK, the, the worst thing that we can do is to ignore what is happening right now. This is the, the worst thing that we can do. Yes, um, I would add to what Marco said that also we as teachers uh, should um, try these tools uh, and find out, as, uh, as Lydia was saying, if they're really um, um, helping us and saving times, so they're not saving time, and how they can uh, help our students, as Marco was saying. So we can continue the discussion. I also invite you to join uh, the group and we can continue this discussion in the group. And yeah, <laughs> thank you for uh, being here. And yeah, and thank you very much to all of you and to all the participants who joined today. I wish you all a nice evening and let's keep in touch. Bye, everyone. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you.